Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you like this episode, please remember to hit the like button and leave a comment or two. Then subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications of whenever we release new videos. Also, please remember to share them to your social media. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Before we start, I just wanted to tell you that we are now on Twitter. So follow us at the link posted below this video. This episode, we will visit a place we rarely go to and to a time in which nature was just outside our door. This mountainous and untamed area is crowded by stands of ermine's birch, sackle and fir, and iso spruce. Sika deer crowd the hills aside the Japanese sero, which is a deer-like wild goat and the national symbol of the nation. Many of the animals here form their own unique subspecies based on the isolation of the island from any other sources of genetic input. This means that Izo red fox, Japanese macaque, and the Izo brown bear are unique. This species of brown bear is renowned for its aggressiveness and hostility towards human beings. The problem started arising on the Akita family farm in the early winter of 1915. The family horse was panicked by a disturbance in the barn and the family patriarch rushed out to witness a large bear fleeing his barn having raided the family cache of corn. This area was still very primitive, and animal incursions were not unheard of. A few days later, the big bear reappeared. Being concerned for the horse, Mr. Aikida rounded up some volunteers and decided to chase the bear away for good. The men positioned themselves for a kill shot and fired shots striking the bear. The bear fled, and the men went to bed for the night to allow the bear to die. In the morning, they resumed tracking the bear and followed the blood trail for some time before a snowstorm set in. The bear was headed toward a nearby mountain, and the men assumed that that would be the last they'd heard of him, since they'd given him plenty of reason to avoid further contact with humans. On December 9th of the same year, the Oda family was enjoying basic farm chores around mid-morning. The family matriarch, Abimeu, was watching an infant named Mikio. They were enjoying the warmth of the fire when the injured and hungry brown bear knocked down the door and growled and pawed at them. The bear backed Mayu across the room and reached into her arms and bit the head of the baby, killing her instantly. Mayu fought with all of her might, throwing firewood and just about anything else she could get her hands on at the beast. She was obviously no match for the giant brown bear as it simply knocked her down and tore her to pieces in her own home. Mayu was dragged from the house into the nearby forest. It was reported that the floor of her home was covered in her blood. A 30-man search party was organized on the following day. They had no sooner entered the forest before running into the brown bear. The bear was clearly guarding a food cache from them. Five of the volunteers fired at the giant before the bear could be driven off from the scene. The men found Mayu's remains. All that was left of her was her head and portions of her lower body. The bear had consumed the rest of her corpse overnight. Amongst the villagers, the obvious concern was that the bear would now think of people as a food source. They mustered a hunting party of 50 farmers to rid their village of this bear once and for all. The rallying point was the Oda farmhouse. The bear appeared as expected at around 8 p.m., but the hunting party was in such disarray that only a single shot was fired before the bear escaped. The party immediately left the neighboring Mikiu homestead and started following the bear's tracks downstream in the dark of night. The Miyuki matriarch, Yeyo, was preparing a meal while the village men were chasing the bear. She held her son, Umikichi, in her arms while she worked. Yeyo was startled by a noise outside and before she could check it out, the giant brown bear crashed through a window and into her house. As chaos ensued in the home, the contents of the meal she was preparing spilled onto the fire, extinguishing it, and the oil lamp for lighting was put out as well. The house was dark, and Yeo's sons were seeking her protection. She tripped over them in the confusion. The bear immediately began biting and clawing Yeo and her son. Odo was the only man who was left in the Miyuki home to protect them. Odo burst into the room, and the bear immediately redirected its rage at him. This allowed Yeo and her sons to beat a hasty escape. Odo hid behind furniture, but the bear raked him with his claws. Others in the house were not so lucky. The Sato family was seeking shelter with Yeo and her children. The bear killed the fourth Sato boy and bit his older brother. During this frenzied attack, the bear also mauled and killed the third oldest son of the Miyuki clan, Kinzo. The Sato family matriarch, Toke, was with child. 
During her attack, she begged the bear to kill her, but leave her baby unharmed. The bear killed and ate parts of her, but left her baby, which was later pulled from her womb alive, but died shortly thereafter. Meanwhile, the hunting party thought they were following the bear tracks downstream and discovered they had not followed the right bear. They ran into Yeyo, who was severely injured, as they returned, and she advised them of the attack. The men quickly surrounded the Miyuki house and could hear the bear attacking the occupants inside the dark home. They decided to burn the building with the bear inside, but Yeyo talked them out of it, as there may be survivors in there. Ten of the men posted up at the front door, and the remaining men went around the back of the home. The men at the back of the house decided to drive the bear out of the front of the home by making a bunch of noise. The clatter scared the bear out the front door into the crowd of men posted up there. These men were all lined up, though, and could not shoot for fear of hitting the men in front of them. The man in the front of the line tried to shoot, but his rifle misfired. In this confusion, the bear fled right through the mob and into the night, without being hit by a single bullet. The men entered the home by birch bark torchlight and beheld the gruesome scene inside. Two of the children were injured, but lived. The death toll now stood at six people, including the pregnant Miss Sato. The village gathered at the nearby school and triaged people at the Tsuji farm. Mr. Sato, still unaware of the devastation wrought on his family, had found lodging at a nearby hotel for the night. Upon returning to Senkabetsu, he joined the hunting party to find the bear. They waited into the night at the Miyuki homestead, but the bear never showed back up. On December 12th, local authorities organized a rifle team to dispatch the man-killer. The group immediately departed for Senkabetsu. The party resolved to find and kill this bear immediately. The team decided to try to bait the bear into shooting distance with the corpse of one of the victims, over the objections of the victim's families. The plan appeared to be working as the bear did peek into the house, now occupied by the rifle team, but quickly fled the scene back to the forest. The plan was a miserable failure, and only further traumatized the victim's families. Mr. Miyuki consulted a local bear hunter, Mr. Yamamoto, to recruit his help. The woodsman declined due to selling his firearm for money to buy alcohol. Mr. Yamamoto indicated that he believed it was the same bear that had killed three women in a previous incident. He deduced this because the bear had a hallmark that would mark its victims with a diagonal slash from shoulder to hip, or kezakake, as the bear would be dubbed. On December 13th, the party discovered the ransacked Oda family home. The family's winter stores of food had been devoured, and the bear tore up eight neighboring homes, but remained a ghost in the forest. The men noticed the bear was spreading his reign of terror downstream and set up a defensive barricade. Standing guard all night, one of the guards noticed a shadow across the river, and to avoid shooting a human, he spoke to it. When he received no response, the man opened fire, and the shadow melted back into the forest. In the morning, a squad of men investigated the site where the shadow was seen. They observed giant bear tracks and blood in the snow. They knew they had wounded Kesakake once again. In an attempt to beat another prevailing snowstorm, the men started tracking the bear at once. The bear hunter, Mr. Yamamoto, tracked the bear down and crept within about 60 feet of the sleeping man-killer. He fired his rifle two times, and his bullet struck the giant in the heart and in the head. The terror and violence was finally ended. A necropsy was performed on Kesakake's carcass, the bear stood 8 feet 9 inches tall and weighed 749 pounds. Tissues from his victims were pulled from his stomach, and his skull and skin were kept as artifacts to the event. The artifacts were eventually lost, and no trace of Kizikake remains. As a result of the attack, some of the survivors died from their wounds, and eventually the town was abandoned. Experts believe Kizikake woke from hibernation due to lack of food. It is believed that human settlement affected the bear's natural source of food. After reviewing the details of this episode, I have a few questions for you. Do you think Kezakake was awakened from hibernation, even though he weighed 749 pounds? Do you attribute the bear's ability to escape the hunters to ineptitude, or was it due to the terror giant bears stir in our minds? How do you think the bear knew when to make noise and when to be silent? What would the villagers have done if they didn't have the snow to show where Kazakake had traveled? I will gladly read and answer your thoughts, so please post them in the comments section below and let's talk about it. Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. 
If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider clicking on the like button and clicking on the bell icon. We'll help you know when we post our new episodes. Posting our video links to your social media profiles furthers awareness, and it's fun. We slashed our prices in our merch store, linked below. So check out the bargains there while you shop. As a member of our human community, remember to adventure bravely and be careful out there, especially in bear country.